As I say, if anybody's got any questions uh, for David, just uh, get my attention and uh, we'll put the questions to you. The first question I was going to ask you, David, when we were speaking before the start of this, there was one man in particular who you say is absolutely instrumental in, in the success at this time. <coughs> there was only one man, it was Sean Farnham. He was just dynamite, different class. He gave you, <coughs> I don't know, he gave you Celtic. He gave you the jersey. You were told if you were the first team, second team, third team, it didn't matter. When you put the hoops on, you just didn't get beat. It's as simple as that. A wee bit sentimental. I'm sorry about that. But I was a, I was the captain of his team, but him and I were like so very, very, very close. And that's what Celtic's about. And that's why Celtic. There's no goal ever beat Celtic, will they? No. No, no chance. Come on, no. let's go. Big brown there, boys first. Come on. For hey, sure. Come on. Hey. And as as very 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 clever you I mean, Mr. Steen was, you know, forty maybe forty years in front of his time. He, he had us doing things forty years ago which are happening today. And he's seen that and uh, nearly walking. Neil Walken always said, get two full backs that get up the line. He said that, you he, he, he had the boss, you had Neil, you had Sean. It was really, really not hard to work out how, just how successful it would be. Um, look, look at tonight, it's marvellous just to see everybody here. Um, I've not seen a lot, of, a lot of the boys for 30, 40 years, and it's as if it was just a bit. It's because you're a part of an institution that cannot ever, ever be beat. It's as simple as that. Celtic will never be beat. Now, one of the things that um, Paul talks about in the book, and, and maybe you can just tell people, there's a, there used to be a, a kind of special uh, game that, that kind of helped create a team bond that went on in your uh, mum's back garden. <laughs> What used to happen was maybe every, I don't know, every eight weeks or ten weeks, um, as I say, I was a couple of years older than the rest of them, but when I, the first, to, to explain what Celtic was about, I can remember the first day I went in the Celtic Park, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I was standing on the track, I was standing like that, Bill McNeil came out, John Hughes came out, I really was, I tapped my shoulder and it was Jimmy Johnson. And he said to me, uh, you're Larry Catnick? I said, uh-huh. He says, um, you come and train with me, son. Are you okay? So we trained for Tuesday to Friday. And then on the Friday, I shook my hand. He welcomed me to Celtic. And he says, all the best. <laughs> and that was wonderful. And what I tried to do after that, again, David Hay, George, Kenny, Danny, Everybody, Eddie McKellar, Jim Clark, everybody that's here, I tried to welcome them because of what Jimmy Johnson done for me. And I think that's a big, a big, big part of it being uh, part of Celtic. But what we, we took it maybe a wee stage further is that um, <laughs> at that time, um, Shrew and Falker, out in, you know, had a house, four or five beds, at the, at the back was, uh, had the goals in the you could have a wee game of football in the game, because it was quite big. So every so often we'd come through, and the boss, Mr. Steen, knew about it. So we went, we'd go for our dinner, we'd have two or three drinks, we'd come back, have a wee laugh and about carry on in the house. But on the Sunday morning, five asides in the game. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe, we're arguing about corners, shies, <laughs> <laughs> and then at half time, my mother would come out, right, in you come, but you want a roll sausage, a roll egg, you want brown sauce or tomato sauce, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was hilarious. But that was that bond, and the boss knew that we, and he would just say to me, how'd again go on Sunday? I said, oh, I'm not telling him, to each. But you, you were actually, if you weren't there, on that Sunday game, on the Tuesday you could have been playing Rangers or whatever, 
Uh, how, how did it go on Sunday? What was the score? <laughs> we, had, we had great teams that played every week. And that, that kind of thing is something that you... I know it sounds crazy and people go, that didn't happen. It did happen. It, it definitely did happen. And that was the strength. That was what we had. It was a strength that's very, very hard to beat. And it still continues today. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask David? Where did the Quality Street come from? Where did the name Quality Street Gang come from? So the question is, where did the name the Quality Street Gang come from? Have any idea? <laughs> was that, I don't know, maybe we're like sweeties or something. Have any idea? <laughs> I, just, I think it was the press. I think it was the. I think it was the press that that uh, sort of got into that. I don't know. I think probably what it was is because of the, the standard of the player, the quality of the player that was coming through. Um, that, that would probably be the reason for that. Um, although I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, but it must have been the quality. I mean, you, think, you think of the players that come through. Different class. Just my boss. Thanks, David. Anybody else got any questions for, for David? One fine question I was going to ask, and you maybe kind of touched on it on, on some of your answers, is that you know there was a, a bond. I mean, the, the lines talk about that as well, of, of the bond that was there between them that still exists. And you've, you've mentioned it yourself, that bond that started and was developed in, in those Sunday games, the five aside in your mum's back garden. Um, why do you think it was that that group of players, and some went on to become Celtic players, some went and played elsewhere? have that bond and, and why is that, that remains strong? I think, I think the main thing uh, basically was that Celtic had at that time obviously you know the Lisbon Lions now when it was it was an honour it was an honour just to train with the Lisbon Lions everyone was such a fantastic professional player they, they, they brought us up um, you know to to appreciate what it was like to play for Celtic. And when you were training there, they were up the front. Bill McNeil is a magnificent captain. Almost at the front of the training. Never never once young lad is coming to the t he would go and speak to them, he would welcome to Celtic, the same as Jimmy Johnson done to myself. But that was the main thing. The main thing was you were up the last certainly felt privileged to train every day with, with the Lisbon Lions. But, but they, they helped us, they, they brought us through, the, it, was, it was quite unbelievable the bond that was there. But as I say, it went through for the boss, through to Sean, through to everybody, to Bob Rooney, everybody that was connected with Celtic, to Neely Mocken, that was there at that time, it was special, it was different. And the reason that we were so successful, and Celtic will keep, always be successful, but at that period of time, it was a very, very, it was like just a, I don't know, it was hard to describe. It was hard to describe and it was just a privilege for you to put your training gear on, to go and train, never mind play. And just a fantastic, fantastic time and it was, not a lot of people can, I know thousands of people would like to put that jersey on, but when you put that jersey on at that time, you were there. You played for Celtic. And that's the main thing, you played for Celtic. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. Just before David sits down, and what I'd quite like to do now is just a kind of special picture if, if Paul can come up. But all the, the guys, the, the former Celts that are here tonight, I'd, I'd mentioned hopefully all of them, um, if they could come up, we could just get a special picture. Uh, for all of them with, with Paul as well, if that's okay, and obviously it gives them their opportunity if they want to take this kind of unique group picture here. Um, so if, if all the guys, all, all the former Celts who are here tonight, all the guys who, who, you know, Davies teammates from the late 60s, if you could all, if you could all come up, we'll invite Paul up as well and just get a kind of unique team shot. Excellent.